Hello everyone and welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Tonight I have two guests and to protect the innocent and just for argument's sake we'll call you Josh and we'll call you Wes. Everyone okay with that? Yeah, yeah. for me. Okay, great, great. Alright, so Wes, this is your first time smoking cigars although you do smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Okay, and Josh has been smoking cigars with me for several months now. Mm-hmm. And Last week you brought over um, a Jameson infused cigar, yep. and you really liked those, and I thought you might like these. Now these cigars um, are, this is the Acid line, which is made by Drew Estate. Um, Drew Estate is known for cigars, uh, the Acid line, which comes with, I don't know, 10 or 12, however many different infused flavors that they make. and then. They also make um, the Java 4 Rocky Patel, which is a uh, chocolate coffee infused cigar. And then the regular Drew Estate line, um, they're famous for things like the uh, Liga Pravada, the Undercrown. Um, there's, yeah, they have this whole, you know, they have a whole line of, of cigars. So the Acid line are their flavor infused cigars. And typically, I'm not real big on flavor infused, but there are a few that I really enjoy, mm -hmm. and this is one of them. I'm thinking I already smell the sweetness on it. Getting it? Yeah. So when you just smell the wrapper, smell all the botanicals on that? Mm hmm So when you say botanicals, you mean like flowers, because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that sweetness. Yeah. yeah. It smells good. Yeah, really, really nice. Something like this, you won't get this kind of scent on something that's not Drew Estate acid cigar. Any other cigars, when people, you know, they'll nose them, and they'll pick up things like hay, and maybe sometimes like right. a floral, or some cedar, or something uh, kind of nougat or whatever. But you won't get this type of scent yeah. on the, a the non- smell. This is right. very different than yeah, most Yeah, very different from any other cigar, smell. right. It's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love that smell. And that's, that's the biggest thing with these cigars that really draws me is that smell is so addictive. I mean, I, I catch myself snorting them all the time. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'll open up the humidor just like, oh, I love that smell. Mm -hmm. The other thing about the acid line um, is, first and foremost, Drew Estate makes a great cigar. They don't take something that, uh-oh, we messed that blend up, let's shoot some flavors into it just so we can sell it. That's not what they do. They take a top-notch cigar to begin with and then infuse it with flavors. With, yeah, with their botanicals. And uh, they, um, I, yeah, I don't know exactly what the process is. Um, different companies do different things. Um, but as far as the process that Drew Estate uses to do the flavor infusion, I don't know what that is. Um, I never you know, never researched it. Um, honestly, I don't you know don't really care. <laughs> it, it's there. I know it's there. I know they've done it. They don't try to hide it, mm -hmm. and that's that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't need to know their processes. I don't know if they have some kind of secret way that they do it or or whatever. Now you notice what I did. What you want to do? But yeah, you, there's caps. So there's several layers. It's gonna oh, be yeah, hard to see this like, but there's yeah, several. Yeah. And what you want to do is you just want to get just that first cap off because you, what you want to do is you want to open it up so you get airflow. You don't want to cut it down to the point where it'll unravel because these caps, the way they the way they make cigars, you have your, your filler, which is all the stuff in the middle. Then you have a binder that goes around that that holds that together. And then you have your wrapper leaf, which is just, for the most part, it's for aesthetic reasons. But it also does add some flavor. Yeah. But when they, when they roll the cigar, it kind of wraps like a barber pole on an angle kind of thing. And then what holds it all together is a cap that sits over the top of it. So if you cut too far into that, it'll and there's rattles. nothing, yeah, exactly. It'll start unraveling from the top and it'll just be nothing but a pain in the butt the whole way through. <laughs> and now, I have done it. Yes. Um, so, and then with this, you have to be very careful. This is extremely, yes, extremely sharp. You'll, you'll take your finger off like, like it's butter if you get your finger in there. This, these are very sharp. So you can either give it a shot or I can give you mine. <laughs> I'll give it a whirl. Okay. I'll hand it to you like that. You just pull that little lever down and it'll open up. So and you want to get just just a little, uh, a little bit too much. Try that. 
and just quickly. There you go. Let me see how much did you get. Uh, go and do a little bit more. What you what you want to aim for is for the top of the cigar to be even with the top of this, just straight across. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're another way to do it, which I don't do with that because I want to scratch it up. You can lay the cutter on a table and set your cigar down on it and squeeze it, and it'll give you yeah, the, so the right. Yeah. So the bottom of the cigar hits the table, you know it's good. Yeah. Something like that. Perfect. Josh. You're at a hell, hell of an angle there, it looks like. Are you? Yeah, look at it. I mean, angle's fine if that's what you want, but I found that if you don't get a, a relatively straight cut, it'll actually draw crooked through the cigar, and what will happen is one side will burn real quick, and the other side yeah, won't burn at all, and next, yeah, next thing you know, it's you know way up here on this side, and nothing over here is burning. Yes. Pretty good, give me a shot. There you go. Yeah, you're good. You should be good. Awesome. Alright, good deal. Alright. Next step of cigar appreciation after you nosed it, you nose the foot. Now, with this cigar, you're going to get pretty much the same sense because those infused flavors are they are pretty powerful. Yeah, oh, yeah you can smell them. Oh, man. That's sweet. You do get a little bit of different on the foot. In addition to the botanicals, they're not as strong, but you'll get some kind of like, there's almost like a dough, like a bread dough in there. A little bit of chocolate, like a chocolate cake or something. All right, and then the other thing is a pre-light draw where you, you draw through it without lighting it, and you'll get different flavors that the tobacco offers without even being lit. Of course, you're getting the sweetness on your lips. Oh yeah, from the uh, infusion. Yeah, it's like super sweet. You're getting a little bit of leather in there on the retro hail. Now Josh is becoming familiar with the retro hail. Mm -hmm. What is the retro, the retro hail? Is it's something you'll be able to do. Oh yeah, as a cigarette smoker. Yeah, he'll be able to just exhale through your nose. Bring oh. it in, exhale through your nose. Okay. What it does is it goes over the olfactory bulb, and that, that'll pick up different qualities in the smoke. And you have the scent receptors, your, your taste buds in your tongue, that pick up some things, and then the olfactory bulb picks up other things. And then your brain compares those two and tells you what you're tasting. Gotcha. The next step will be lighting, obviously. Now, when you light a cigar, you don't want to just you know burn the crap of it. You right. do what they call toasting. You don't actually you, you don't jam the cigar down. Right, in you the just flame. get it hot and then right. You just kind of mm -hmm. you get to where it just starts to toast. It'll start to brown a little bit. You get a couple pieces that start glowing. And what I'm going for is I, I try to get a little glow all the way around the very edge, and then I start working to where the whole thing will start to glow. I'm going to do this a little quicker than I normally do with you, Josh, because we'll either A, run out of fuel with the three of us, or mm -hmm. this lighter will get so hot, the third person will never be able to pick it up. Right. <laughs> Try to get my little ring all the way around it. I was rotating it the whole time I was yeah. puffing and lighting it. Yeah, it keeps it even. You need to see pretty even. It's good. Yeah, well, let you try it next. Sure. Right. And while you're working on that, I want to get the wine poured. So where did you get this at? Picked this up at uh, Kroger today. Now my regular viewers know that I typically don't drink wine with my cigars. I, I, I do, but not in my reviews. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've done support in my reviews before, but uh, I don't think I've just drank wine in reviews in general. 
no particular reason why. I just I typically tend to drink either bourbon or or a cognac or, or something along those lines in my cigar reviews. But so this is a new wine to me. This is uh, called Cigar Zin 2014. It's a California Old Vine Zinfandel. I'm not going to go into all the blah 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 on the bottle. Set it down here for now. All right, here we are, just starting the first third. And I was about to tell the two of you that the Cuba Cuba comes in two different wrappers. They have the natural wrapper, which is this, and that's that's a color designation. Um, it has to do with the way they ferment the leaf or where the leaf lays within the plant itself before they harvest it. Um, this also comes in a Maduro, which is a much darker leaf. It tends to be a little thicker, more robust, a little stronger. It has more of an influence on the flavor of the cigar. Um, I just I just chose the natural today, no particular reason. But uh, anyway, so uh, about this wine, like I said, we've I've never had this wine. Um, it's it's pretty good, yeah. It, you think it goes well with the cigar? I do, because it's not a super sweet wine. Right, right. Very little sweetness to it. So the bitterness. Pretty dry. I would say the bitterness goes pretty well with how sweet these cigars yeah. are. And slightly spicy, very slightly. Mm -hmm. What you like? And like I said, it's a Zinfandel, so I would expect it to be spicy. That's typical of the grape. So anyway, like I was saying, we're we're in the just starting the first third of the cigar, really. And one thing that I noticed, you don't necessarily notice when you're sitting here, but if you kind of walk away from it and come back. Those botanicals that you can smell in the wrapper, you can smell them in the smoke. Because when I was coming back from turning the camera on, mm -hmm. I could smell those botanicals in your guys' smoke. So, um, yeah, in fact, now, now I'm thinking about I, I can smell his. I'm not smelling mine, but it's like from yeah, a distance. Yeah, smell it over here. Yeah, like from like a distance, I can smell the base, botanicals. Can smell yeah. yeah, so if, if you're around people that mm -hmm. maybe don't like, you know, the idea of, oh, it's smell mine. If you pull out something like this, right. You know, you've got a better chance of them saying, oh, that doesn't smell too bad. It smells pretty good. What do you got there? Right, right. Oh, yeah, right. I do like this one. I figured you would. <laughs> Still has a little bit of sweetness on the on the mm -hmm. lips from, from the wrapper leaf. The botanicals. But when you when you draw and you roll around in your mouth and then Retrohale, you're not getting that same sweetness. You're just getting cigar, mm -hmm. and the different f flavor profiles that the cigar has to offer. Um, they're not overpowered by the botanicals. Mm -hmm. They're they're subtle, but they're there. And these aren't real badly priced. They were honestly they were right around eight dollars, nine dollars. They're nine dollars for these. They went up on price. Now you notice when I tap my ash off, see how it leaves this nice cone shape? And that's a sign of really good construction as far as how they placed the types of leaves and um, that each type of leaf was properly fermented and cured and, and that kind of thing. When they break off like that, it, it's designed that through basic engineering, if you have the stiffer, slower burning leaf in the middle, it'll hold the outside together better. A cone is right. pretty sturdy, right, right. so when, when an ash breaks off leaving a cone, that's a sign that you have a, a well-constructed cigar. Now, provide, yours is a little a little um, <laughs> yeah. exaggerated there. I'm not sure what <laughs> happened there. Yours is almost burning too slow in the middle. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what happened with that one, but uh, yeah, typically that's, you know, what you have here is, is what you would look for in something like right. That would have I mean, yeah. proper construction. Right. It's rolled well. Right. And and it's not just it's not just the rolling. It it, it starts from uh, leaf selection. So it's just good product. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the process is all along the way. This cigar, by the time we sat down and smoked it, probably went through a hundred hands. From shit. From planting to um, priming the leaves. 
just kind of molding and, and removing certain leaves of the plant as it's growing to help the other leaves uh, bring in all the nutrients from the ground to get the proper amount of sun and then the actual harvest of the leaves and then the, the drying and the remoistening and you know, th there's so many processes um, well, I showed you that video, and they showed yeah, you a lot of the processes. Intense. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into making a cigar, and when you think of it that way, if someone were to say oh, nine dollars for, you know, that's kind of pricey. Right. But when you think of all that went into it, that's pretty darn cheap. Nine dollars, and a hundred people had to make this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. Hell no. It's. I mean, cigars are really they're a luxury item, but they're for the everyday man at the same time. You can get cigars anywhere from just you know, a couple bucks to cigars uh, that are a thousand dollars a stick. Right. So, um, just because you pay a thousand dollars for it doesn't mean it tastes any better than a ten dollar cigar. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video, and uh, I'll come, we'll come back in the uh, second third. So, welcome back. Um, we're just starting to remove the, the little band that says Cuba Cuba. And I was pointing out that the reason I wait to remove the, uh, the bands is because when I removed the little Cuba Cuba band, some of the wrapper leaf stuck to the band, and now I have a little tear, so that's going to affect the smoking. But because it's only, you know, maybe a half an inch at the furthest point from the burn line, I'll be able to burn through that quickly. So, right. But if I had taken it off in the very beginning and that happened, I would have had four or five inches <laughs> worth of it's not drawing. Right. Um, but as I was starting to say, the reason you get that is, is one, either because as the cigar is heating up and you have that band putting pressure on it, when you release that, it's able to pop. Right. Um, and the other thing could be either excess glue from the band when, when, they, when they wrap it around and sometimes a little bit of the glue sque squeezes out and sticks to the wrapper leaf. Or, when they roll a cigar, they put a little bit of this, it's, it's a, a gum glue. And it together? Mm -hmm. And they put it right on the edge of the leaf. So as they're rolling it, it's only the very edge that ever gets glued down, right. where the edges overlap. And what could have happened is when they put the band on, a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of the glue may have been on the outside and it stuck to it. So when I pulled that banding off, it would get rid of the leaf. I don't know which was the case, I'm going with it was on the cigar wrapper, not the band, based on where it's at. If it had been in here, see how it pulled the color off that side? Yeah. Then I would have said, okay, that's probably it. But because it's not into that, I think it's right where, right where a seam. But I could be wrong because it doesn't look like a seam. See, here, no, because here's the seam here. So maybe it was from this, because I can see the seam was the other direction. Can you see the seam? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, it's a tight seam, good seams. So it's constructed well, so it it's hard to say why why it did it. Ooh, look, I got a buddy. Oh, yeah, you want to get that out. It'll uh, eventually ruin the taste of the wine. Not so much just in the glass, but I have a winemaking background. He's a swimmer. Yeah, <laughs> I have a winemaking background. What happens is when, when bugs get into the wine, when they're making it, they release all these different nasty things in the wine. It'll actually kill the wine. It'll just, one bug will destroy a thousand gallons of wine. Holy shit. Yeah. Did I get them? I did. But anyway, so that's uh, a little uh, Cigar 101 as far as... Uh, why the wrap relief can tear when you take the banding off. So I'm about in the middle of the cigar, so I'm well into the second third. You know, I'm noticing the sweetness is going away more and it's bringing a different flavor. Right, getting a different flavor. And that's what's referred to as the sweet spot. Not necessarily sweet as in, oh, I'm getting sweetness. The sweet spot as in that's the section of the cigar that has the most to offer. Um, and that's typical with most cigars. It can it can fluctuate from cigar to cigar uh, as far as where exactly that sweet spot is, but typically that that middle third is considered the sweet spot on, on most cigars.
got a good pepper on the retro ale. Not not overpowering. It's not like a punch in the face mm -hmm. with a fly swatter or anything, but it's uh, definitely got a good uh, good good kick in the old nasal mucosa. And like I said, this is, you know, first and foremost, it's a good cigar. It is. And then it's infused with the botanicals. Um, these cigars aren't going to have a very wide flavor profile as far as, you know, you're not going to get cedar and kitchen spices and leather and barnyard and haze and, and different things like that, minerals and, and earths and mushrooms and damp woods. You're not going to get all that. But you're going to get a good basic cigar with, for the most part, no flaws unless there was something that went wrong with a specific cigar. And that could, could be anything from handling from the time it was constructed and shipped out to the stores to how the shopkeeper kept it to how you keep it in your own humidor. Right. Maybe you know, your humidor can become sick um, where the balance gets off and the cigars just don't micro ferment properly um, so it's it, it's important to really monitor your, your humidor make sure your your levels as far as your relative humidity stays you know pretty constant if, if you get a lot of big fluctuations um, slow fluctuations are fine but if if today you're at 70 percent tomorrow you're at 84 percent humidity and the next day you're at 12 percent humidity yeah I mean it's it's hard on the cigars um, Shipping is hard on cigars. Heat will kill a cigar. You know, they, they come over on boats and planes and everything else, and they sit in this you know, metal container on a ship that's basically an oven baking in the sun as it comes across the ocean. You know, um, you know, that's hard on a cigar. Um, you know, it's a natural product. It's, it, like wine, it's, it's basically a living thing that you're smoking. At one point, this thing was living, and you don't want it to be totally dead. If it's totally dead and dried up, it's going to burn like you know, when you rake the leaves up in your yard in the fall. You, know, you don't want that because right. you're not going to get any of the flavors. The flavors, you look for the, the oils that are within the leaf. Just like poison ivy, it's the oils in the poison ivy right. that your body's allergic to, and that's when you break out and get these blisters and you itch and everything else. It's got nothing to do with the leaf itself. It's the oils. Same thing with cigars. If you dry it out to the point where all the oils are gone, you can never save that. You can get a cigar that's a little bit dry, as long as the oils haven't dried up completely, you can save that cigar. Um, it, it takes time, and you got to be very tender with it, but that's for another lesson, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this, this is great for me because you're, you're starting to learn something about the cigars, so you're, you're kind of getting what I'm talking about. Yep. And you're brand new to cigars, yeah. So this is all just like, whoa, whoa! I had no idea, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, no, and cool. I was at both your guys' place at, at, at one point, um, but with me, I started with the learning process almost from the first day I smoked a cigar um, on a regular basis. You know, I've tried cigars throughout my life here and there. You know, I used to smoke cigarettes as a teenager, and I gave them up, and then. Um, I tried smoking a pipe for a while, the fond memories of my grandfather <laughs> smoking a pipe, the different aromas. And the funny thing is, the aroma that I remember the most and that I was the most drawn to was actually his damn lighter. <laughs> <laughs> what did the he scent. With? Did he just use well, a he, he had a basic pipe lighter, but you filled it with that, that can of... Um, butane? Uh, no, not butane, the liquid. Um, the, uh, oh. Where it's got the wick and you just soak this cotton... Uh, oh, shoot, what is it? Um... I'm drawing a blank. Great for it. Yeah. But anyway, it was the smell of that as it would ignite. That scent, that's what I remembered. And then there's different, you know, the different pipe tobaccos will have, some will have good scents, different, yeah. you know, like apple or cherry scents or whatever. And some have really no scent at all other than smoke. Um, and some will have flavors and some won't. Uh, and, and the scent doesn't always match the flavor and vice versa sometimes they do but and you'll get that with cigars as well so um, it smell one way and then you smoke it it's completely different yeah yeah oh I've had some cigars that I was so disappointed in because smell in the wrapper mm -hmm. and that pre-light draws oh this is gonna be a good cigar and I light it and it's like 
So, where's the hay? Where's the leather? Where's, where's all the cedar that stuff that I just yeah? Where, where's the chocolate that I that I got on the pre-light draw? There's nothing there. It's mm. just smoke, or or it's just pepper, or or whatever. Um, and that kind of seems to be the um, the mainstream today. People look. I've noticed most most of the cigar smokers I talk to, they look for that pepper blast. And so I think a lot of the cigar manufacturers are blending their cigars to give that pepper blast because that's that's what's hot now. That's a say it's business. Yeah, it's business. It's right. what's hot now. People want that pepper blast. Just like uh, there's this kind of a small following and it's growing where people want these bigger and bigger cigars. They want these great big behemoths, you know, these <laughs> big seven inch by 70 ring gauge. Jesus. And as far as ring gauge goes, that has to do with the diameter right. around. Um, and it's measured in 60 fourths of an inch. So a 50 ring cigar is 50 60 fourths of an inch around. Yes. And the, the trend these days, when, gosh, it must have been you know six or seven years ago, they started to come out with these 60 ring cigars. It was like, oh, that's huge. Oh, nobody's going to smoke that. And then people loved them. And you know, I was the same way. Oh, I never put that big thing in. It's like a log, you know. <laughs> I find that for me, a six by sixty cigar, man, that's awesome. Now I've tried this, the, the seventy ring. Eh, I've, I've had an eighty ring. Uh, to me, it was awful. And, and one the worst thing, part was, about that is if it tastes awful, that's a huge cigar. That's a lot of yes, cigar. <laughs> and it takes a long time to smoke. And and honestly, your palate will get bored after a while. For me, ninety minutes is just right. If it's much less than 90, I'm wanting more. If it's only an hour, I'm like, oh, I wish I had another 20 or 30 minutes on that cigar. <laughs> but if I'm, you know, an hour and 45 minutes in or something, I'm thinking, look, I've had enough, but I've got four inches of cigar left. I don't <laughs> want any more. You know, I'm, I'm bored of that flavor. Right. Which is why I like a cigar that will change in flavor profile as I right. smoke it. As it goes down. Right. And and the reason that happens is because it's the same tobacco leaves, but with the fermentation and as the heat comes through the cigar, it's drawing the flavors out of the leaves. As it's heating up the oils, and you're getting the flavors from the oils in the cigar. So it, the shorter it gets, you're closer to that point of where the oils are starting to vaporize and you're getting the flavor from the, the oils and if it gets too hot as it's coming down you're getting closer to that heat it's killing the flavor it's like burn like when you burn your food it's the difference between raw food and burnt food you don't want it raw you don't want it burnt you want it right in between right. and there's a fine line sometimes but like you know I like popcorn that's got a couple burnt pieces in it I wouldn't want the whole bag burned right. but to get, once in a while I'll get a burnt piece that just it just changes the flavor profile I love it same thing with cigars. That's a good analogy. <laughs> I, I thought completely once. agree with you too, though. What burnt popcorn? Yeah, just a couple pieces. Yeah, I w I, yeah. Don't want the whole bag burned. Oh hell no. But if I've got, it's funny because I'll pop a bag of popcorn, and sometimes it'll be something about the size of a golf ball, right about in the middle of the bag, and it'll be <laughs> this, this rock of burnt. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. And that'll, that'll be all the burnt I need for the day, <laughs> you know? And then I want the rest of the popcorn to be perfect. If it's not, then that bit of burnt was too much. Yeah. All right, well, we'll end this uh, segment here, and we'll come back in the, the final third and see what our thoughts are. All right, so here we are. We'll, we're all uh, in the uh, final stretch of the cigar, well into the final third, approaching the nub. Wes, what are your thoughts? Uh, flavors, picking up anything uh, besides the botanicals and the sweetness? It's definitely got a more bitter taste now. Maybe okay. It's just me. Oh, are, you, are you getting any kind of... Maybe any tars you're getting. It's also kind of went like half out. Oh yeah, yeah. When it when it doesn't burn properly like that, you'll get things like tunnels and different things like that. And what'll happen is it'll draw a concentration of heat through a certain section of the cigar, and the rest of it won't burn properly because all the heat's concentrated through that. It's like a straw. Right. Um, and it almost looks like maybe you're getting. Yeah. I, 
there's a couple dark like holes, yeah. and all the heat is being concentrated through that, so it's not burning evenly. Right. Um, that happens sometimes. There's there's different ways of constructing a cigar. There's a bunch method, and there's a what they call a, a tubo method, where they basically roll the leaf, each individual leaf, into like a straw, and then they bunch all those straws together. And the idea behind that is. The, the air will flow through each of the straws and give you an even flow. And then the bunch method is they just kind of crumple them together. And then, so what happens is instead of you getting the heat and the, the air flow th flowing through, it's, it's more like hitting a wall all the way instead of through a straw. Two different methods, both are fine, um, but when you get a bunch method and then you get a hole like that, it's usually where some of the bunches aren't burning right, and so it's going between the bunch instead of burning the leaf. Okay. Um, it's it's a bit of a flaw, but it's just part of the character of a handmade product. Right. Um, of course, the the idea would be to not have that happen, and so yeah, it's a flaw. But yeah, and I can see when you're drawing on that one side's burning and the other's not. You can take the lighter and you can touch it up. You, you hit that, that side that's not burning properly. You can get it going. And that may help it. Typically it does. Make sure you get it lit really well. And then touch it up all the way around too because otherwise what will happen is just that one side will burn and the other side won't. So when you have a good even burn and it's pretty, pretty straight across, nice crisp burn line all the way around, you'll get the best airflow, the best burn, and then your flavors, flavors will be better. Something else you can blow through it. Take, take the here. Let me show you. Watch. In the lighter. Since you're having burn issues, what you do, you, you draw a little bit and then you, you blow out. And you notice there was all these yellows and greens and different things like that. That's the various impurities. There's different gases, ammonias, and that kind of thing. That when you're fermenting a cigar, you're trying to ferment off the ammonias. And it's just a natural action of drying and curing and fermenting the tobaccos. They do that to get rid of the ammonias. But you have to take it to a certain level. If you get the, if you get everything out completely, you dry it out your leaf and it's no good. Right. So it's a fine balance. And when you're having burn issues and you have to touch it up or relight it, it's gone out or whatever, or just crazy burn. If you if you blow through it, some people refer to it as purging the cigar, um, that will force those gases back out and burn those gases off instead of you drawing them in. Gotcha. Those gases will give you some off flavors. So if, if you're smoking a cigar and you notice, hey, I'm getting some off flavors, purge it. All right, so you were getting some bitter flavors that was probably because it needed to be purged, right. touched up and purged. Is it any better now that you've touched it up? Did you, did you just purge it too? Is it any better? Looks like it's still drawing kind of light. It's not It's not quite as bitter. All right. It's lightening up. Okay. Any trouble with yours? You had that real sharp point. It's burning pretty good. It looks good. like it's burning good yeah. now, yeah. It's getting spicier the more I get to the end, though. Okay, okay. Which I like. I still got a little bit of the sweetness in there. Yeah, same with me. I've got a little bit of sweetness, and um, that retro hell. I've got a good pepper. It's not, you know, not in your face. Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like somebody punched me, but uh, it's definitely there. It's smooth, like a. Um, it was almost a coffee note, like a bitter coffee almost. Alright, so we'll wrap this video up. Um, this has been the Cuba Cuba from Drew Estate. This is in the uh, natural wrapper. Um, about $9 for this cigar. Um, flavor infused. Right up my alley. Right up your alley. Very, very tasty. It's really good. Okay. Alright. I enjoyed it for my first cigar. Good, good. Well, I thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews, and 
If I were to rate the cigar, I didn't bring my score sheet out, but if I were to rate the cigar, I'd probably give it uh, 89 out of 100 points, something like that. Um, I've, I've smoked quite a few of these, mm -hmm. and other samples, uh, to me, have been a little better. Um, maybe for me, it just didn't blend well with the wine as well as other things, but uh, it, it is what it is. So. Uh, I thank you for once again watching Scorpion Scar Reviews. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> watch, watch her tail with all the glass. Bye.